Welcome to the journey. Gratitude is not a very popular attitude when we live in a milieu of rights and of entitlement. Very often we are not grateful. And gratitude can be even more difficult to live as a disposition when our hearts are feeling challenged or anxious, like in a time of lockdown. I want to invite you to take a moment now in silence just to name for yourself one thing that you are grateful for at this time. It's easy to be grateful when we are feeling good and consoled. It is much more difficult when we are feeling challenged and we are struggling. And yet it's exactly at that time that we need to try even harder to cultivate gratitude. When we actively look for the positive, when we start to notice things that are positive, our brains become primed to notice more of the good and less of the bad. And so we are then not overwhelmed by the negative and therefore we don't easily feel like we hit rock bottom. Gratitude has a powerful effect on the brain. Positive psychology tells us that people who practice gratitude experience higher levels of well-being, reduce stress, are less anxious and less depressed and have much more satisfying relationships. You know, friends, neuropsychologists tell us that our brain has a neuroplasticity. We can rewire it by creating new neural pathways or strengthening existing ones that are linked to happiness. One of the simplest ways of doing this is a practice of gratitude. St. Ignatius Loyola was strong on the idea of gratitude. In the last contemplation of his spiritual exercises, the so-called contemplation to attain divine love, he invites the person making those exercises to remember all the gifts and blessings of their lives. Praying these blessings, remembering these gifts, and then offering one's gratitude to God deepens hopefully and expands our ability to be open and grateful. Feeling gratitude automatically makes us want to respond more generously and more wholeheartedly. And so what can we do? Here are three quick ideas to help you to cultivate gratitude right now. If you have family or friends on a WhatsApp group, invite each person to share three things every day for which they are grateful. Even if you've had a tough day or someone else has had a tough day, there's always something that we can be grateful for. It could be something simple like food or even running water because many people don't have running water. And this helps us not only to look for what we are grateful for in our day, but also helps us to listen to what other people are grateful for, which amplifies our own gratitude. You could take or keep a time in the day to write a gratitude journal, just noting down moments for which you are grateful. Write a prayer or a poem of thanksgiving to God at the end of each of those entries. And the third thing, you could think of some people you would like to thank and perhaps never have said thank you to. And so in these days of lockdown, perhaps make a call or send a message or write an email. And this could be anybody you are grateful to. Gratitude is a deeply spiritual practice and one that we need as we journey through these days of lockdown. Or as one of my very favorite spiritual writers, no doubt you've gathered that by now, Henry Nouwen says, gratitude flows from the recognition that who we are and what we have are gifts to be received and to be shared.